Winter is here. Season seven of Game of Thrones has arrived and we are so excited, gonna assume that you're excited too, to see where this amazing story takes us. If you have not seen it, Game of Thrones is a visually stunning series on HBO because it's filmed in incredible travel destinations all around the world, many of which you can actually visit in real life. I'm Alex. I'm Marco. And you are watching Vaga Brothers, your go-to guide for travel tips, vlogs, and inspiration here on YouTube. And this video is all about GOT in IRL, Game of Thrones in real life. So if you love Game of Thrones, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not already and share this video with your fellow Game of Thrones fans. And if you haven't watched Game of Thrones, if you're not into it, stick around anyways because the places on this list are absolutely worth visiting. Without further ado, get ready for a journey down the King's Road from King's Landing to North of the Wall and everything in between. Okay, first up, Northern Ireland. Perhaps the single best one-stop shop for Game of Thrones filming locations is Northern Ireland. It's a setting for Winterfell, the Iron Islands, the King's Road, and pretty much any other generic shot of Westeros. There's literally dozens of filming locations in Northern Ireland, and that's because many of the green screen shots were done at Titanic Studios in Belfast. There's way too many filming locations to list, so here are some of the highlights. Make your first stop Winterfell, whose real name is Castle Ward. Many Game of Thrones locations combined real life locations with a ton of CGI, but Castle Ward looks a lot like it does in the show. You can rock a fur cloak, just like the Night's Watch, learn some archery skills, and even play with the dire wolves. Also, one of the super cool things is that they have the dire wolves here uh, from the Stark family. So look at this guy, he's huge. What's his name? This is Thor. And what's the breed? It's a northern Inuit. Just watch out, because heads do roll. This is my dislike. <laughs> Next up, make your way to the King's Road. Located outside the town of Armoy in Northern Ireland, the Dark Hedges are the real life location for the shots of the King's Road. Be warned, it's full of tourists, all of whom are trying to get that perfect selfie. So if you want to get a great photo, arrive very early. I'm talking about like sunrise early. Not far from there is Ballantoy Harbor, a gorgeous little seaport that was transformed into Lord's Port uh, in the Iron Islands for the show. That's a great place. Northern Ireland is a really cool place to visit because George R.R. R. Martin did base a lot of the storylines around real life cultures, such as the Celtic cultures of the British Isles and Ireland. Isn't he from Northern Ireland? His family, I believe, are Ulster Scots, as in uh, Irish Protestants who moved to the United States. So he does have a connection with Northern Ireland uh, through his own lineage. So I think that's kind of part of the reason why they decided to film it there in Northern Ireland, but not 100% sure on that. Just down the road from Ballantoy Harbor is Carrick Areed Rope Bridge. The actual bridge is unfortunately not featured in the show, but the cliffs surrounding the bridge were featured in the show when Renly Baratheon was camped out near Storm's End. The Carrick Areed Rope Bridge is right next to the Giant's Causeway, perhaps one of the most famous tourist attractions in the island of Ireland and definitely worth a visit, even though it didn't make it into the show. It's also next to Bushmills, oldest whiskey distiller in the world. Which I feel like all Game of Thrones characters would appreciate. Mm. In the same area is the Musenden Temple, which is this like neoclassical temple on a cliff overlooking this huge beach. You might recognize this beach from the place where the red woman burned all the heretics at the stake, but it's much more peaceful these days, I swear. That, this building has a really funny history behind it. I believe it was built for the owner's mistress. And the cool thing about all these places in general is that they're actually quite close together, so you can do all of these pretty much in a day trip. The Musadin Temple was built for the mistress of uh, one of the local clergymen, who just so happened, in a very Game of Thrones-esque twist, to be uh, in relations with his cousin. So, strange, totally unrelated, but definitely in the vein of Game of Thrones. Lannister. Must have been, Must have been a Lannister. <laughs> Farther south in County Down, you will find Inch Abbey, which is where Rob Stark was made the King of the North. The King of the North! The King of the North! Ah! Ah! 
Also, you have Tollymore Forest Park, which was where the entire show started, the opening scene of season one with the attack of the White Walkers. White Walkers, White Walkers. <laughs> There's actually tons of more locations. We don't have time to go through all of them. So if you're really, really interested in it, if you're a diehard fan, Go on a tour. We recommend Winterfell Tours. The guy Will there is super chill. He was an extra on the set and can give you a lot of like stories and anecdotes from the actual filming of uh, Game of Thrones. Moving away from the frigid north of Winterfell, we're going to King's Landing, specifically the city of Dubrovnik, a medieval walled city on the Adriatic in the country of Croatia. The onside shots of the Red Keep were filmed in Dubrovnik's Fort Lovrijenac, sorry for butchering that word for everyone from Croatia, as well as the city's walls, which were built during the Middle Ages when Dubrovnik was caught between the Battle of the Venetians and the Ottoman Turks for control of the Eastern Mediterranean. The question is, will those walls be strong enough to survive the upcoming battles of season seven and season eight? There's about a dozen filming locations scattered throughout the entire city. So go to the tourism office, get yourself a map. They have them printed out there and that will give you more information or also just go on a tour. Outside of Dubrovnik, you can visit King's Landing's gardens in the Trestino Arbitorium. You can visit Quarth on the island of Locrum and you can visit Daenerys' dragon lair in Diocletian's palace in Split. Next up, let's go to the Mediterranean island nation of Malta, which also was the setting for King's Landing, but only in season one. Now the filming was concentrated in the ancient capital of Medina, which is actually a landlocked city while King's Landing is supposed to be on the coast. So all the shots they used were really tight shots. They're supposed to be kind of like the alleyways of the city while the coastal shots of King's Landing were all filmed in Dubrovnik. However, they did use the San Anton Palace, the modern home for Malta's president, as the Red Keep. Now, normally we would recommend that you go to the Azure Window on the nearby island of Gozo, but unfortunately, that has fallen in the ocean, so you can no longer see the place where Daenerys and Karl Drogo got married. It is no longer. To portray the inhospitable tundra north of the wall, the producers chose to film in Tingvellir National Park in Iceland, just a short drive out of the country's capital, Reykjavik. It's home to some of Iceland's most stunning natural wonders, including its largest lake, which sits atop the continental rift between the North American and European plates, which you can actually scuba dive down into. The visibility is incredible, but the water is freezing. So if you're gonna do that, good luck getting into the wetsuit. <laughs> Some easier options include Golfos Waterfall, which is one of the most beautiful in Iceland, the Schneefels Glacier, which was the fist of first men, as well as the Grotagja Cave, which is where Jon Snow and Egret first made love. Just remember, this is a public hot spring that a ton of other people use, so please do not try the same thing. You filthy wildlings. In season three, the story follows Daenerys as she searches for an army in Slaver's Bay. In fact, most of these desert cities were filmed in Morocco. So as Daenerys went liberating city by city, the first one she goes to is Yunkai. Yunkai is actually Ait Benedao, and then Astapor was really Esweda which is this cool, hippie, bohemian city that has a big Portuguese fort and uh, was really popular in the 1960s. But after season three, production left Morocco for good as Daenerys traveled to Marine, which in Game of Thrones world is not far from there, but is actually filmed in Croatia. Okay, so Greece was never actually used as a filming location, but when they created the Eyrie, which if you remember was the sky tower with the sky cells and the moon door, that whole area, that was actually based on this thing called the floating monasteries in the north of Greece at a place called Miteroa. It might not have made the cut for filming, but it's definitely a place worth visiting in its own right. But if you stick around too long, they might just kick you out the moon door. <laughs> Ain't no coming back. You get kicked out of the moon door, that's it. By season five, the story moves to the new world of Dorne, which is filmed in Andalusia in Spain. It said author George R.R. R. Martin based Dorne off the medieval caliphate in Andalusia, 
which was one of the most advanced centers of learning in all of the medieval world. The royal palace at Dorne was actually filmed in the Alcazar in Sevilla, constructed in 913 by the Islamic Moors, who fused the Roman Mediterranean influences with Arabic design in a style known as Mudejar, and it's absolutely beautiful. Other minor locations in the land of Dorne include the Roman Bridge in Cordoba, the Alcazaba in Almeria, and the Peñascola in Valencia. Lastly, leaving Dorne and traveling north to Catalonia, the city of Girona was the location for the free city of Bravos, where Arya Stark traveled to learn from the many-faced god. So bringing things back to the present, back to season seven, there have been lots of leaked photos and tons of speculation about locations. But we do know that the Basque Country in Northern Spain is gonna be making an appearance in season seven. As you may know, we used to live in the Basque Country. We love the place, it's got great food. It's an awesome place to visit in its own right. Uh, but what we have heard is that there was some filming at the most beautiful spot, San Juan de Gaslogache. San Juan de Gaslugache is a fortified hermitage. It's really pretty and it's definitely worth visiting, but if you're gonna do it, it's 230 odd steps to the top where you need to ring the bell for good luck. And to alert everyone inside of the Citadel that everything is under attack because it's season seven and- Winter is here! Pretty much. <laughs> They also filmed down the road at the beach of Zumaya where there's this really cool natural formation called Fleish, and apparently have also filmed in Extremadura in the city of Cáceres. We'd love to hear from you guys and girls out there. If you have any GOT conspiracy theories, please put them down in the comment box because I'm gonna be scrolling through there. I'm super curious. Obviously, if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Give it a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications if you have not already. And share this video with your fellow travelers and Game of Thrones fans. Okay, in the meantime, stay curious, keep exploring, and we'll see you guys on the road. The King's Road. In Westeros. All right, take it easy, guys. Peace out. Boom!